Hi, um, my name is Sandeep, and um, I'm a BMF architect over here at Big Switch Networks. Uh, I've been here uh, at this company for several years, and kind of saw BMF through the inception uh, to now. And I just wanted uh, to give you a journey of BMF. What is BMF, and how this thing came along, and where we are right now with BMF? So, so, so BMF is big monitoring fabric. It's a solution to monitor, analyze, to do uh, troubleshoot your network. So you have, uh, uh, so in your network, you it could be any network. It doesn't have to be big switch network. It could be any from any vendor, any topology. It doesn't have to be data center. It could be campus. Uh, we have customers using in their LTE backhaul networks or any kind of workloads. It doesn't have to be bare metal. It could be virtual machine. It could be container based, whatever. And we, we get the feeds. We had to build a very scalable a distributed system uh, architecture to kind of get the relevant feeds to the relevant tools. So there are a bunch of tools that network operator will use to troubleshoot, like for example, APM, application man, uh, performance man, or NPM. So you had to, we had to build a solution which is pretty highly scalable. It's, it's kind of Kafka for, so there are producers who are producing the feeds from different points in your network. The consumers who are consuming different topics, they may be consuming multiple topics. So we had to kind of build like a Kafka for network monitoring. And we had, we had so this is, this is how our journey started for PMF. So we took SDN, we took, and if you had to do it at scale, you cannot do anything like with so, so much of horizontal scaling. We have customers who are tapping, who are having thousands of taps and feeding us. We can't do it using proprietary hardware. It will, the economics will not work. We wanted to say, uh, uh, we wanted to use open networking hardware, Broadcom-based chips, x86-based servers, and feed it to the centralized tool farm. These tool farms are, sometimes they get really expensive. So we had to be, we had to give uh, optimized uh, stream to these things. We can't give more or we can't give less to them. So that, that was the foundation of big monitoring fabric. And that's how we started this journey. Now, we, we got a pretty good traction on, in, on that journey. Um, but customer, uh, we're asking more. Uh, like they are like, how do I get NetFlow everywhere, anywhere I want? How do I get like I want to do flow analysis in my production network? There are only subset of Cisco devices that generate NetFlow records. Not everyone can do it, and that too, they have very limited scale. It hits their performance on forwarding when they are trying to do flow analysis. So how do we do all these things in out of band network without impacting my production network? I don't want to replace anything in my production network. I just want to feed you guys. You do the analysis for me. We get the feeds, we'll do the analysis. Right? So we had to build a lot of other features that our customers did, like deduplications of packet, because now you're tapping at multiple points. A packet traverses to multiple points. You want to kind of, if you're not doing power hop debugging, then you may want to dedupe. If you want to slice the packet, I just, I'm just interested in the header of the packets. Don't give me the whole packet. I don't need 1,500 parts. So you're basically saying, sorry to interrupt, if yeah. you have like 10 gigs of traffic traversing the network, you're collecting that flow just once. Yeah, we, right. we, can, we can do pretty much like the whole flow analysis of any. So we have these, these taps could be one, 20, one gig, 10 gig, up to all the way up to 100 gigs so far. Um, and um, header stripping, the, lot, of, lot of the customers have in the production network a bunch of OLS, L2GRE, MPLS, MPLS over L2GRE, VXLAN over this, blah, blah. So, but I'm, I'm only interested in the original packet. Give me the original packet, how do you get that, correct? So we had to do header stripping. It's extremely flexible. You give me any kind of encapsulation, any number of encapsulation will strip the header for you and then we'll get So, and get this. So we had to build this. Now, this, we had to do it at the scale, correct? So everything, if you look at it, is a cluster. It's an independent cluster of its own, managed through the same single pane of controller. So we had to, leverage a lot of technologies like DPDK, using HPC instruction sets, just-in-time compilation, and so on and so forth, to kind of get this distributed, highly scalable distributed problem. So we, we treated this as a distributed problem, correct? Um, now, along the lines, customer asks, hey, but either I have remote, remote sites. I want to send my package to the, cent uh, the tools which are in the central sites. So do the filtering at the remote before you uh, send it over the WAN link. 
we don't want to do filtering. Uh, ideally, every, every filtering should be done at the source. So we give them a solution. But tools could be remote. So we had to do integration with a lot of virtualizations, so like VMware, OpenStack, Kubernetes. Um, because what if I want intra-host traffic? If it doesn't even come on the wire, how do I get those traffic? So I, we had to do those integrations. Correct? And to get, OK, um, uh, using the APIs or the agent-based approach, we had to get the feeds from like the virtual taps from these hosts uh, feeding this network. And I wanted to answer a question on compliance and all. So, so we have we have two products. Which one is analytics node, and one is a packet recorder node. Analytics node is you take this whole bunch of fees, like multi terabytes of fees that is coming to you, and you give a value added dashboards to the customers. Like, what's really happening into my network? Insights into your network. Like, right? what's what's happening? So that's the cluster of analytics node, and we also have the packet recorder nodes where you store the packets for security, for compliance use case. So you can recreate the security incident that happened. And I'll go over that. Um, um, any questions? Can this be used for application dependency mapping? Yes. On the analytics, you can see which app is talking to which app. And, and also, we'll see what's, in, what's the norm. If things went, uh, went out of norm, we can do predictive analysis and alert you, saying, hey, this app has stopped talking to this app anymore. Is that, is that norm? And so but if, if you're receiving a date, lot of data from different tabs, then yeah. how quickly will the monitoring fabric be able to correlate to give us the right flows? Yes. So what happens is, if you look at the analytics node itself, the way the architecture, so you get a lot of packets, correct? And this is multi multi terabytes. Now you have to do real time analysis on this. Exactly. Okay. So you take important packets out of it. Okay. For net flow generation, you, so once we generate the net flow, this analytics becomes a NetFlow collector. And then you can do flow analysis on that. So this analytics is not taking all the packets. It is only taking the summarization or the processing of all those packets and showing it to the customers in different dashboards, correct? What are my apps doing? What are my hosts doing? What are the choke points in my network? And so on and so forth. And we'll, we'll go with that. So sorry, how the, does um, the all this packet processing on the source node impact the CPUs on source nodes? Yeah, so, so mostly... If you need to do the duplication, slicing, header stripping on, on, on a switch. Yeah, so what we do, so, so the way it works is you get the feeds uh -huh. okay, to this separate monitoring fabric. Okay, on this monitoring fabric is setting the service nodes. So this is all happening out of band. Okay, so it's the service nodes that do the duplication yes, slicing. Yes, so the up. service nodes. All so right. the, our basically our idea is whatever Broadcom chip can do it, we'll do it in the Broadcom chip. Uh -huh. But yeah. if they cannot do it, do it in the service node. I and mean, basically that's that's the thing that we. But we wanted to stay with uh, 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 like basic open networking hardware and x86 based servers. We didn't want to do anything proprietary. And I guess uh, with the latest evolution on T3. Yeah, uh, that they can do packet timestamping and time stamping, other yes, yes. metadata yes, is yes. going to help you a yeah. lot. So we currently we do timestamping over here, but when we go to yeah, P3, yeah. you got the point exactly. We'll do it on yeah, this. Yeah. So we prefer to do things at the at the switch level, but then it's just how the switch ASIC also evolves. We have to kind of keep them. So yeah. I'm sorry, the last one. But yeah, how's yeah. that? How do like uh, um, things like Tofino and uh, and Cavium? could help you. You could like program those behaviors yes, yes. right so, in the NPU. Right? Yeah, so there are, some, there are other chipsets over there that they can help you with some of the functionality, but not everything that you oh, yeah, sure. So for example, if I, so just to give you an example, this NetFlow generation over here on this service node, uh, we have 16 port service node, and it can generate NetFlow for 16 million flows. That's huge. Uh, and so the table sizes are like really huge. We stri strive to do everything at line rate, correct? So, so now to get those things from other chips, they need to have these table sizes and, and so on and so forth. So not everything can be done over there. So, and what's the largest DC scale that you are running this on? Oh, yeah. So, so we, have bunch, uh, we have a bunch of large scale customers, correct? So uh, thousands of taps uh, being fed to us. Uh, we have our our one of like this again that is a every there's a pod we have pods and we have multiple pods each of the pods can have like um, up to 80 to 100 switches and there are a bunch of tools and we have customers across financial um, uh, cloud scale a whole bunch of university a um, uh, bunch of customers like 
Kyle, what's the current count of customers? Like 100 plus? Yeah. 200. At scale, we're in the hundreds. I mean, if you think about our largest at scale BMF deployments, since kind of at scale was where we started, um, you know, our largest are now upwards of 10,000 tap points. Yeah. So these are massive scale and highly distributed fabric. Yeah. If anything is our smallest are like 48 NPV ports. So the thing actually does scale up and down fairly elegantly. That led to its own challenges as we were designing through workflows. Um, but I mean, congrats to Sandeep and team for working through that. I also think Sandeep is being very, very modest here. The Big Mom service node, to give you a sense for some of the engineering underneath that, his team even ported the eBPF JIT to user space so that we could connect it to DPDK buffers. Yeah. We think that we were actually the first company to commercially ship any product built on DPDK. Yeah. We were getting 160 gig on x86 servers through some pretty wild packet manipulations, thanks to a lot of the work under the covers that his team did on a count in the clock cycle type of basis through Linux. So it scales. So, so analytic servers scales is yes. what you're saying, right? You're talking about not only does it scale in terms of number of flows handled, it's also talking about rate, which is the other part about an analytics engine. You have to ingest hundreds of gigabits per second of data. Yes. Then you have to take the flow, so you have a flow rate count, and then you have to store that yes. in some sort of... We store them in some layer two, layer three cache. Yeah, that's right. So there's three parts to it. And most people throw servers at it, yeah. racks of them, yeah. and I think you've got much more down the software acceleration, used the available yeah. performance capacity. Yes, yes. So building the system, like engineering the system was a complex thing, but we wanted to set the foundation right from day one, correct? Everything is horizontal scalable, if you look at each of these components are. So, and managed through a single pane of control. Now, this is the on-prem on deployment. Uh, let me go over the cloud. Uh, so you take these components in the cloud. Um, so the things that we like about cloud is getting the VPC, your flow logs, and all from the cloud to on-prem, but there are a lot of things on-prem that you don't have in the cloud, like packet level visibility. You don't have that in the cloud. How do you get that in the cloud? I mean, a lot of our customers are like, hey, um, I have, I'm have. i moving to the cloud, and some of the customers like uh, Gap and, and so on, they were, they're moving to Azure, or some of the other customers, they are moving to AWS and so on. So they are uh, like, give me, keep my consistent, keep my workflow consistent, correct? Like I'm, I'm doing, used to doing things um, on-prem, how do I do it? So we took the, uh, so there is a customer VPC, and you have a uh, monitoring VPC, which has, which, where we will get the feeds from the customer VPCs. Now, in some of the cloud providers, they provide us API to get the feeds. Some of the cloud providers don't provide, so we have to install the agents over there. So, but once we get the feeds, it's the same thing. You go through all this switching, so a service node functionality, analytics, packet recorder, and so on and so forth. So you get uh, the uh, thing in the cloud. Now, it's not just restricted to AWS. Uh, we are working on uh, Azure right now also, as we speak. And later on, we'll work on the Google uh, Cloud. So when, when you mention the agents, it has to be done on all the VMs? On the interested, the VM that you are interested so in, in monitoring. The VMs but not, but <clears throat> hopefully not for Azure in future. OK, but, yeah. but there is no solution for PaaS services where you can't even install agents. Yeah, so, so there, are, there are a couple of things, Neil. So if you look at it, there are three options over here, correct? So either um, you have APIs that the cloud providers gives you and say that, hey, I'll give you feeds from these, these workloads. That's solution one. Second solution is you put the agents. The third, third is you become in line. You become their next hop so that the traffic feeds through you and then get over. So in our, uh, the way, the way we are in our journey, we want, to, we want to stay out of band. We don't want to stay in line because it's easier to insert with that strategy, out-of-band products uh, gives you easier insertion strategy with the customers, and they're like ready to adopt, and, and so on. So we want to try to stay that. We're trying to work with the cloud providers to give us APIs so that we don't need to install. Okay. So that. Otherwise, you're stuck with a service mesh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then, then you're stuck with a service. And you're burnt for every one instance, you've got another instance just doing network just visibility, mm -hmm. yeah, which yeah. is a network to monitor a network. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. so, so then that's where, uh, when Cedric discussed multi-cloud director, it comes where you're not only monitoring this on uh, one of the clouds, you can monitor on a different, various other BMF pods. They can be on-prem or on the cloud using the multi-cloud director. So this gives you a bigger picture of how these things are tying together. Um, any questions? Okay, I'll go to the next one. So, so the analytics node, uh, 
basically we discuss about it. We we give a lot of views about it. I'll go uh, quickly like app views, security views. Okay, are there rogue DNS servers over here? Are DHCP server? If has somebody made a rogue DNS query, and you can uh, you can see it, uh, you can analyze it, or we also auto baseline things, and you can do predictive things over there. You can uh, we will do. Uh, um, a flow collector. So there are S flow collector and net flow collector is integrated into this analytics. We do IDS integration with open source IDS like uh, Bro and Suricata, where you get the uh, Bro logs and Suricata logs, and that's the security part. Like, uh, how, how do I? Um, then also uh, a packet capture integration. So we integrate with our packet capture, where you can just uh, fire the query. You see an uh, anomaly, and then you can fire the query, and that's for compliance purposes and so on. All these things will come with all the automatic alerting and reporting. You can say, you can set up alerts saying, hey, if the link utilization goes above 50% on my DB link, alert me. And in the alert, we not only just send an alert, we send it with the context. What are the top flows that are contributing to those alerts? And what are the impacting flows? So, so there's a lot of context so that people may ask, like, if we want to make basically the net network operators and the security op like the next rock star in their in their organization they don't need to depend on like okay I, if i ask this question what is the next question so we we, we are trying to think what is the next co next question they'll ask and we're trying to answer that uh, i see a lot of integration uh, integrations is there a uh, an api that yes. just it, that, so we can just integrate yes. security tool sets right yes. with this without yes so what happens is everything has a rest api for over here so all of our all our products. So you can ask, uh, go directly to the controller and get the REST API integration, <laughs> or you can go to the analytics and get the REST API. And so, so if a security <laughs> tool is seeing something, it can go and query back the REST. So it's all it's all REST API. Okay. And uh, Robert will go over it, but I'll just quickly. So there are traffic from unknown locations, or when did the problem start happening? What is the misbehaving client connections? And uh, doing predictive uh, for packet recorder, again, again, it is a very horizontally scalable. It can scale up to multi petabytes. Uh, it's treated as a one logical packet recorder from a customer point of view. So, customer doesn't know how many packet recorders are behind the scenes. He will just fire the query. We'll send the query to all the packet recorders from the controller. We'll get the result. We'll coalesce it and send it back to the uh, to the user. Um, it's integrated with uh, analytics. One pretty cool feature um, uh, is it automatically gets uh, discovered. Uh, symmetric load balancing is happening, so the flow, the conversations, always end up on the same same packet recorder. Um, there is advanced PCAP analysis. You don't need to download the PCAP even without de downloading the PCAPs. And this is some lot of our customer asks us, "Hey, I, some of our operators don't have uh, permission to download the PCAPs because of the compliance reason or so." Uh, but can you do? Can I still figure out whether it was a network problem or an app problem? How do I do that? So, so we wanted to do that. So, so is it keeping historical information? And yes. So, how far back? So, so that all depends on uh, each unit of packet recorder is 160 terabytes. Okay. Let's say you you want a, a half petabyte of storage. You'll put three of these units. Okay, and depending on how much traffic is generated, and you can select how much you want to record to this packet record. Also, you can slice the packets. You can do all the dedupe. So it's all it's all coming together. Correct? You can use the service node functionality before it goes to the packet recorder. So so you can reduce how much go traffic that that you want to send to the packet record. But each of these things again is a horizontally scalable uh, product. And so the smart replay is where I want to, to kind of show you, like. So we wanted to build a network time machine, correct? So what, uh, like, can I go back uh, last week? What happened between these two hosts? I want to recreate the security incident. Can, how can I do that? Only if you, you need to have package store for that, correct? So, so you saw something interesting happening, some anomaly happening on the analytics node. Analytics node has a time series DB. You can go back and look into that. You can query the packet recorder. The packet recorder can give you the results and summary back uh, to the analytics node. It can also replay the packets to the tool of your choice, correct? As long as it's connected to the Bigmon fabric directly or through through the tunneling if it is remote. So you can so you can say, hey, I have this really expensive security tool. Don't keep sending traffic to that. Only send it on demand. Use packet recorder as an inexpensive package store on demand. Replay it to this third-party tool. 
and that could be a, um, a security tool that you're used to using in your organization. It could be directly connected to BMF, or it could be in the cloud. Doesn't matter. As long as there's IP level reachability, we can, we can send the traffic. So by this, you can go back in the time, recreate the incidents. You can do all these things. That gives you the network time machine. So we wanted to build a network time machine. So what hardware will the packet recorder not use? So packet record, again, packet record, again, all commodity. It's a server high density, server storage kind of high. So we use Dell HP. Uh, so right now we are, uh, 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 it's using Dell uh, 740 XD. Hmm. Yeah. So but then when you mention multi petabytes of um, scalability, then that means I have <laughs> so many servers, yes. and then the software will automatically distribute the yeah. packets. Yes, and, and Sorry, yeah. Retrieve them if I want to read yes. them. So you just connect it. We auto discover it. We auto lag things where you can. Uh, uh, we'll send the query to everyone. We'll send you give you back the coalesced results. So it's. So we have customers who um, who have multiple packet recorders right now. Um, I have one on. Uh, which form factor do all these components come in? Is it VMs or can, are they containerized? So. So the controller, uh, so let me go back to this slide. Mm. Yeah. So the controllers can be in VM form factor or hardware appliance. This is, uh, these are the switches. So now, if you're in the, in the public cloud, all, all the components are virtualized. I mean, uh, so on, for on-prem, uh, this is, uh, th service node is a hardware appliance. Uh, uh, switches are hardware appliances. Um, uh, currently, uh, packet recorder and analytics node are also hardware appliances. They are all available in ISO. They are available in ISO, yeah. So, Software. Yeah. We can give you the specs and the ISO, and then I think with that, I'll uh, give it to Robert. He will show you the demos of all the analytics node and the packet. So this, this model is very, the, I, I just get a sense that your version of this is far more performant than other products like this. In some senses, packet recorders and monitoring fabrics have become a very popular topic. And there are definite overlaps between this and other products. I'm not going to name those competitors. Make, but it seems like the sort of performance that you're talking about here, you're faster yes. than other people, yes. more efficient. Performance is much faster. The features are much more rich. Because a yeah. lot of replay, like even the replay, you can replay yep. real time or replay using the interframe grab mm -hmm. that the packets arrived on. Right. So we do all those kinds of and things. And that's because and I would conjecture that you've been developing the product now for five years, Yeah, you've had that head start. So if yeah. somebody else has come to market with a packet recorder or a packet capture engine, then they've only just come in for the first time, they're, they're coming from behind. Yes. They won't have the time and energy that you've put into it. Yeah. And also the main important thing is the, our, <laughs> our interaction with so many customers. We have so many hundreds of customers right now, so we get a pretty good feedback on what they, what they really want. Yeah. I mean, the whole packet recorder came as because we saw a lot of our customers using the packet, but the way they were using it was so inefficient. We thought it has to be our product. It has to be managed by us. So, right. so that leverage, that having that customer leverage uh, is, is much, much more important. Yeah. I'll bet they're telling you we want it to run faster and quicker and use less resources. That's probably yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. So, um, I think it's also if you look at where the Is there market... a um, as-a-service offering for this or one planned? Managed service offering for yeah, this? Yeah, just an as-a-service. So where where your controllers and everything um, would actually be housed here, but all of the um, sensors would be put on premise. Yeah. So we have talked about it, but uh, so let me tell you there are a couple of options right now. So we have our customers who are using it as a, as a service where they like uh, their main organization, the main security organization owns the whole thing, but then they give it to their uh, BUs as a service. So we it's a multi-tenant solution by design. Now we hosting big switch hosting it in house over here for uh, that is something that we have in plants, but we need. Okay. To, you know. 